Hello and good evening. Here is the Lagos State News at 7. I am Akan Usen. Wife of the Lagos State Governor, Ibijoka Songwoyu, has called on core members deployed to Lagos State for the mandatory one-year national service to make a positive impact for the growth of Lagos and Nigeria as a whole. Mrs. Songwoyu made the call during an interactive session with the year 2024 Batch B Stream 1 core members on a going orientation at the NYSC camp in Yanokpaja. She noted that the NYSE scheme had fostered youth engagement and sustained the vision of its fathers, who believed in a united Nigeria despite the differences in language, culture, and religion. Mrs. Songwulu, who lauded the core members for their resilient and patriotic spirit in serving the nation, noted that their commitment in enduring camping activities following laid down rules and regulations guiding the orientation program was commendable. She seized the opportunity of the interactive session to enlighten the coppers about various programs and interventions her office undertakes to improve the quality of life in Lagos. Earlier in her welcome remarks, the Lagos State Coordinator NYSC Yetunde Barirua described the governor's wife's visit as a source of motivation and inspiration to the core members serving their fatherland. The Legacy Task Force has served removal notices to squatters and illegal occupants dwelling ac across various canal setbacks in the state in an effort to curb incessant flooding occurrences experienced during heavy downpours in the metropolis. These notices, which were served to settlers by chairman of the agency, Adetayo, Akirili were carried out at strategic locations where it has been observed that squatters had built shanties and makeshift buildings too close to the drainage system. Akirili, who described the activities of the squatters as a ticking time bomb due to unpredictable climate change experienced across various parts of the world, said their actions contravene the laid down physical planning laws of at least 15 feet from the canal setback. He said the shanties across various canals at Shuli, Bagada bus stop, beside Atunashi Estate, Charlie Boy bus stop, and Bajulae Canal, were all visited by the agency to notify the occupants of the intention of the state's government to clear those areas. The Lagos State Government has announced total closure of the stretch of Osborne Foreshore Estate Phase 1 to Adeniji Ramp to enable the Federal Ministry of Works lay asphalt on the section. The closure will commence from 12 midnight on Saturday 13th to 5 a.m. on Monday 15th of July. Commissioner for Transportation, Uluashim Oshiemi, highlighted the existing alternative route, saying motorists from Alexander and Glover are to make use of Obadeinka Oyekon Avenue in Wards Ikoi to connect Obalindi Ring Road and access Third Million Bridge for their desired destinations. Those from Victoria Island are expected to go through Falamo Roundabout to link Awulawan Road and access Third Million Bridge for their desired destinations. Oshiemi noted that alternately motorists from Victoria Island can also utilize Ozumba Mbadiwe Avenue to link Mekwen Bridge and proceed to CMS slash Akwenwon Bridge inwards Eco Bridge to access Funshaw Williams Avenue for their desired destinations. It said for the closure period, motorists on the other side from Surab Bridge will have seamless traffic flow inbound Osborne Foreshaw Estate. General Manager of the Legacy Parks and Gardens Agency, Las Park, Adito Popola, has announced that one of the highlights of the 2024 edition of the annual Lagos State Tree Planting Day, which will hold on July 14, is the launch of the eco-friendly playgrounds in public primary schools across the state. While featuring on a TV program on Lagos Television tagged The Conversation, Popola said that the chosen theme underscores the importance of tree planting as an environmental investment for future generations as it aims to instill a sense of responsibility and stewardship within the community, particularly among the younger generation. She said that eco-friendly playgrounds 
will be created using recycled and repurposed materials comprising innovative installations, signages, and a variety of trees, shrubs, and plants covering a minimum of 500 square meters in each identified school. Other activities planned for this year's tree planting day, as stated, includes a ceremonial tree planting exercise to be led by Governor Son Wulu and the Deputy Governor of Bafemi Abzat, as well as, as, uh, as well as a simultaneous tree planting across the 57 local governments and local council development areas of the state. The local state government has announced total closure of the Osborne Foreshore Estate Phase 1 to Adeni Jaram to enable the Federal Minister of Works lay asphalt on the section. That's all for the state news at 7. Just before we go, always drive within the specified speed limits. You can follow us on like all our various social media platforms on X, Traffic Radio 961, Facebook, Lagos Traffic Radio 96.1 FM. On Instagram, Lagos Traffic Radio 961. Subscribe and watch our news and programs live on YouTube at Traffic Radio 961. You can also visit our website on www.trafficradio961.com. NG. Did you know that the Sangwulu administration strengthened alliance with 200 representatives from various women-focused NGOs in the state as part of efforts to alleviate the economic plight of women residents in the state? You can get more details on the Lagos State Government's website. For contact with the newsroom, please send a message to info at trafficradio961.ng. And that ends the news broadcast compiled by Adiswa Ejoyoka. I am Akan Usen. Thanks for listening and please stay safe. Good evening.